Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to day 22 of 30 inks, 30 days. It's the challenge put out by Ink Journal to use one ink a day and one pen. It could be a different pen. It's always a different ink. And today I'm using this rather um, light and somewhat bright green. It's called Colorverse Allen Hills 84001. So here we go. Let's dive in. <laughs> um, Wow, it's just, I like how it's coming out, it's filling in, and we can see all these colors. Yesterday we did a green, but it was a different sort of green. So it, it lo does look very different. And this green, I wanted to call your attention, Colorverse Mariner 4 is the main bottle you get when you order this. And this is the 15 mil, the little small round bottle that comes with Mariner 4. And Mariner 4 was kind of a navy colored blue. So let's get right into it kind of nice that it's on a spread beside Arabella because it gives us a chance to see how different they are. Let's see. I like to have a paper though to cover it up while we're working, but they are very, very different and that helps us to see. So that being said, let's cover that up to help us. And here it is. Here it is in the broad nib. <clears throat> And like I said, it comes with Mariner 4, so it is a small amount of ink, 15 mil, that you get. The availability is pretty good. Check your, you know, wherever you like to order from on that. And just know that this isn't the main ink. This is the little uh, uh, come along or whatever. The, I, I was going to say, it's not really a freebie. Not at all. So, <laughs> But it is the paired ink that comes in took about 30 seconds to dry in that nib <clears throat> and same thing in the 1.5 stub it took about 30 seconds to dry okay uh, this isn't a highly saturated green it is very pretty but I will be very picky about what nib I finish the day with probably going to be the stub nib for me um, because on this paper all three of my nibs did just fine even the Lamy fine nib but on some of the other paper I just couldn't ha hack it in the fine nib at all. So here it is. Let's see. After the fussing there, it starts in the fine nib. Dried it about 20 seconds. And then my first impressions, pleasant color, will be best in the broad in 1.5. And I think actually for me in the stub, it's the best thing. Uh, and it is a, well, I called it a bonus. I don't think that's actually what it is. But it, it comes with that other ink. So um, here's the chromatography. Interesting how it leaves a yellow kind of a line. And we, we'll see a little bit of that after the bath test too. I can't wait to see this in, an, in the Nick Stewart art technique. But it's pretty straightforward other than that green highlighter, I mean uh, yellow highlighter line there. Pretty interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull out the Rhodia. Uh, no, <laughs> let's let's look at the, the bath test now because it's right here and it'll get lost in the shuffle. Here's the bath test result and you can probably see that you can't really read that but you can detect where letters were and it's that bright kind of yellowish left behind. 20 minutes uh, soaking inside the submerged in the water so that's interesting. Okay, and then yesterday's ink, the Arabella, this one over here, the green, that cleaned out really good. A, it got an A. It was no problem whatsoever cleaning out. So, all right, now that we got that done, I won't worry about forgetting it. We'll just push this aside, get the Rhodia. This is Rhodia 80 GSM dot grid paper. Arabella is not going to be right beside it because it, this one's off a little bit. Okay, here it is in the broad nib. I did re-dip that serendipity because I detected that things were getting a little weak after I did the initial lines. So I wanted to just make sure I was giving it every benefit of the color that would come through. Okay, and it looks like it was dry at 40 seconds on the Rhodia. So it was sitting on top of, this is really nice smooth paper, <clears throat> sitting there and taking a little longer to dry. <laughs> looks. Well, that's funny. Okay, here's the Goulet 1.5 stub, which I seem to be fussing with, trying to find a, you know, a, a good spot, which I don't when the ink comes flowing out or is saturated enough where I can see what I'm doing. I don't fuss with that. That nib is pretty comfortable for me. 
but it took only 25 seconds to dry so yeah I know I fussed with it a little before I worked down here to make sure that everything was feeding okay and it seemed to be okay and then in the fine nib I just yeah I didn't like it on this rhodia paper 15 seconds it was dry 10 seconds it was still smearing so that was what happened there Let's get the CVS Caliber paper. This is the inexpensive CVS Caliber notebook, 5 by 7 And here it is. I kind of liked how that looked. Let's see what it did on the back of that, though. No, it didn't go through either. I liked how it, the variation showed up there, um, kind of like it did on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper when I splattered it on. It, it, it gave some nice... Uh, detailing it always does that usually broad nib 25 seconds to dry about 30 it took in the stub so and things are varying quite a bit that's interesting and then in the fine nib it was a horrible experience on cvs caliber paper so it looked weak it felt bad it didn't write well it didn't write well in the stub either on this paper but it was good in the broad nib so if this is your paper, which, you know, that would, you would probably be in the minority with me if it is, but I, I like it. I use it for daily uh, notes that are just, otherwise I'd be burning up really expensive paper. Um, so I have you know, like a full size notebook I use. Okay, so I would, I just don't recommend it in the finer nibs. And then here, you know, we don't get much shadowing or ghosting or anything. It's very good there. Let's turn back on the Rhodia to check that out. We'll have to be looking through Arabella, but there was nothing significant that's really good. Of course, it's a very lightly saturated ink, I think. And Let's go over here and see what we got. Okay, and we got that white paper in there, so that should show you pretty good. Um, just your typical ghosting and nothing really heavy because it isn't that dark, really, of an ink, so... Okay. Oh, I've got one more notebook I want to show you. I, I haven't been doing this in the rotation, but today I had extra time. I wanted to write in it. This is the um, Cafe Note by Nanami Paper Company. And I did write in here today um, with the stub nib with our ink of the day. <clears throat> so, And I, I liked it. So I believe that finishing the day, I'll be happy with it to do pen pal letters. <clears throat> if I pick up the stub nib and maybe transfer everything that's left in the um, the Lamy, which is not much, into that stub to finish the day. So, I mean, this is kind of exciting. I Yesterday I had a project. I went through my, like, winter clothes closet and my jackets, and I was just amazed at the changes uh, in me since then. And so I went back and I looked at my notes, and... I am 46 pounds lighter than I was last year on this date. And it's no wonder I'm having a little bit of a, you know, struggle with my fall wardrobe. I can deal with some of the jackets, light jackets and things, but I can't. Uh, there's some things that are just so big. So I've got like mounds, you know, a pretty good stack of stuff that I can let go of. And that's okay. That's really good, actually. But I'm very grateful for how this intermittent fasting and low carb has worked for me. Um, actually, it was very interesting to me that last year on this date, it wasn't Sunday, but it was a day of a funeral of a loved one. And um, in my humble opinion, it was definitely obesity related. It was heart related, yes, but I do believe it was a complication. And it just makes me want to spread the word even more. So I've got more plans. But anyway, I thought this looked really super nice on here. Right here, I, I just filled it in with the Lamy Fine Nib, and here it was the stub. And uh, no more than your normal, um, let's see, let's put a paper in there so that we don't have that purple showing. Just your normal ghosting that you get with this super thin Tamoy River paper. But I really like that paper. Okay, because I just really wanted to show you that. So let's get our panel and find our missing person here. So our ink of the day is right here. It just, it was the best display of the color. The one on the cola ring looks so much darker. So I wanted you to see it as close to what it looks like as possible. Okay, so as you can tell, I don't really have anything that matches this ink. But I, I got out some suspects that 
could at least either contrast it or show. And I felt like maybe the closest maybe I have is Colorverse Sea of Tranquility, but it's a whole different thing because it's not as bright. This does, Allen Hills does have a little bit of brightness, but not, not like Colorverse Supernatural, which I remember I love that ink. I mean, it got me, it was one of the first ones that got me to say, whoa, I guess green is, <laughs> is one of my colors too. And then this one down here, this Three Oysters Jade, we'll just call it Jade, it has something else going on too. That had a very similar inner chrom chromatography type or reaction to the water. And I can't remember what I thought of it. I'd actually have to go back and go through notes and see, which is a good thing to have those ink journals and, and the uh, videos to kind of refer to. Uh, you'll find it on the green playlist. So then we have these bright, bright ones, really. Karen Dash Delicate Green, that's super bright. You can't really compare them, and neither can you compare Green Lime, but it can at least be a contrast and show you how far away it is. And then this is a new newcomer to me. I had ordered a sample from Goulet. I ordered two samples, so I'll be able to review this one eventually. Monteverde Key Lime Pie. It's really bright, and I'm wondering whether it's saturated enough for me in a, in a nib. I'm not sure. I, I don't I don't know about that. And then this is one. This is gorgeous. I don't have it in a bottle, but I do have a nice sample of it. Noodler's Groon Cactus Eel. That's bright and it shows up well. <clears throat> I, I just saw that actually at this week's uh, Pens in Use by Wosky Squirrel. He had it, I think it was this week's, but anyway, it was in one of his pens. I need to go back and finish uh, the video and make my comment. But this is uh, really out there. This is the Birmingham Field Tourniquet. It's, it's not at all like today's ink, but it shows you a little comparison. Now I've got a little stack of additional greens so that we can look. Um, KWZ green number five is what I'd call more of a traditional green, like a primary color green. And you can see it's a long way from that and yet it's green. <laughs> Oh, I hear an ambulance. Okay, here's one that's in a family that I like a lot, Tasha Olive Green. And it's more like field tourniquet to me. You know, it looks more like that. It definitely doesn't look like Allen Hills. But I thought we could compare it. And then, okay, I don't know what I was thinking. Here, here's a Ky Kyoto ink um, that is so different that I thought, why not? Let's look at it and see how far away that is. I don't think I like that coming out of a nib, if I can remember right. Oh, and we're going to be looking at this ink. This is the um, Robert Oster. It's, it stands for the Netherlands First Pen Show. And so it isn't in this green category at all, but it will be for day 26. It'll be in my pens, so you'll be seeing this coming up. I won a, a, a bottle of this ink not even knowing that I was being considered. I, I think it was just if you were following two certain accounts, they ch they randomly selected, and I got a bottle of this ink. It's, it's about half gone now. I've shared it with a lot of people. I'm not sure what I'm going to think of it, but it's a very special ink. Okay, so that is the comparison panel. Let's look at what I thought of the ink, and I don't know that I think much of rating inks because I think it's just so greedy, personal, weird. But um, I like this booklet. It's uh, by the pen thing. It's an ink swatch plot log that he sent for the channel. Um, and I said this ink is too light for me. But, you know, I did all of this before and we haven't done our art test yet. So that's going to be kind of fun to try that and see whether it changes my mind. I liked it on here. I liked it in that broad nib, I mean, uh, stub nib in the cafe note. It's kind of hard not to like an ink in a stub nib or a broad nib on Tomoy River paper, though. And I judge an ink a lot by whether or not I can use it in my daily journals, too, not just whether it's good on the, on the nice paper. So um, hopefully I wasn't too harsh. I said the saturation was really low. I, th I mean, if this is average, then it's below average. Flow, I thought, was was good, average, though not super, super, and not terrible at all. I, I wasn't really seeing shading much at all. I, 
<laughs> could be because I just didn't, you know, I'd have to take my glasses off, my reading glasses, my whatever. I couldn't wear any glasses and I'd have to hold it right up because it's kind of a weak, weaker color for me. Bleeding and feathering, I skipped that. Dry time I thought was pretty average. I wasn't seeing sheen, halo, or shimmer. Oh dear, I gave it a four, but it is a personal rating. It's, it's hard to take that out of the equation. We've been all over that like a, you know, <laughs> dog with a bone. I said weak color. For me, for me though, and that's not for everybody, I, I, I realize that. So let's have fun then. Let's get it and see. I got a little bit of a different um, thing to try today with this ink. Got it in my head to try it with the ink it came with. Why not? Okay, and you could tell our, even the ink water for this ink today is kind of weak. So, I mean, that tells you a little something. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get all the materials. We've got broad nib, a fine nib, <clears throat> two ink samples. One in the little thing, and then the one that, the, the main ink is Mariner 4, so I thought I'll do something with that. And I've got paintbrush and my main paintbrush that I use all the time. Okay, let's see what happens. <laughs> Dive right in. I'm not sure exactly how I'll go about it, but I'll, I want to see the colors together. And just see, I, I'm not really sure how they decide what to put together. I mean, that would be an interesting question to ask the company. Okay, this is today's. Ooh, I gotta go. There's not much in there. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. We'll get it on there and just see. Ooh, yeah, it's weak. It's gonna need the help of its buddy ink, I think. <laughs> Merciful heavens. Okay. Ah, the other day I got a big, you could probably see it. Maybe not. I got a big green splotch there the other day. Okay, that's the broad nib. It's not really making it move too much. Huh. Ooh, I better hurry if I want to put the other color down. There seems to be, I can see a whole lot of uh, water there. Ooh, there we go. Okay. That, this way we get to see the inks sort of together. See what happens if they even mix or what, what they do. And of course, this is much more saturated Mariner 4. I had a little of this left. Must have been a busy day. <clears throat> I've been cleaning out ink vials, so that's why I say that. Ooh. Oh, let's just let them, like, mingle and mix and everything. That'll be cool. Hmm. Now, I don't have a pen with this, but I've got a fix for that. <clears throat> have my little... Ooh, I guess I better get another ink holder. <clears throat> I got a glass nib pen. Let's see if I can get a little on the tip. There's just so little in there. <clears throat> I don't even know if there's enough. Yeah, okay, there's a little. And I thought maybe we'd even come down here and see what happens. Ooh, yeah. We got a little bit of uh, lightning and chromatography already coming out. This isn't a bad idea, actually. Whoops. Not like me, because usually I don't mix the colors, but I think it'd be, it's fun. Hmm. Oh, wow, that's really got a lot of ink on the nib. Let's see. I'll get a little off. I'm not... Oh, well. Could, oh, no! Okay. How about this? How about we do some sort of a thing that might become a tree, but then use the weaker color to make the trunk, I guess. Now, that might be a little bit more sensible. I don't know. Okay, let's get uh, a little water down below. Oh, look, now we've mixed some colors. That's cool. I'll hold that up as soon as I can. Oh, why not? Let's just see what happens when it goes down below. <clears throat> okay, we'll just run this. Huh. Nice. I don't, I'm digging this. I mean, it's not a masterpiece, but it's fun. Ooh, this ink just dominates, though. It really does, it, and it'll mix with the other. <laughs> Ooh, I see pink coming out. 
Okay, let me hold it up just a little. That, that's quite something. I'm not sure what it is, but it's something else, all right. Definitely, it looks almost tanzanite coming out, and it just takes over because th they certainly know how to make saturated inks, and then this one here is just l so much lighter, you almost lose it. <laughs> you could tell which one I'd rather put on there, but... Okay, now I'm, I'm all distracted by the prettiness of the ink. Let me make sure I don't break my glass nib. I like to keep it in my rickshaw case because I just don't want to break that. Okay, put a lid on here. And then I had just a couple little things to say about what's coming next. Because we are getting close to this series being finished. <clears throat> this 30 days. 30 inks, 30 days. So tomorrow it's going to be Birmingham Golden Gazette. An ink that I just, I love it so far and I think I'm gonna love it. I was looking over the upcoming inks. Let's see, and this is gonna be for day 26. So here we have day 23, 24, 29 and 30. So this is what we have left. The only concern I have at all saturation wise is probably Diamine Soft Mint, but I have a feeling I'm going to be okay with that. I huh. wonder what gives me that feeling. Could be that I had a chance to, to write with that before. I can't remember. I'm going to actually go online and kind of check myself out to make sure. <laughs> That sounded really crazy. But to make sure that I haven't already done some of these because it's at that level now, the, the amount of inks that I'm looking at and, and working with, I have to kind of do those double checks and, and uh, just make sure. But as far as I know, tomorrow, which is going to be Monday, September 23rd, and day 23 of September, uh, you know, 30 inks, 30 days, I'll be using this uh, Birmingham Golden Gazette, which I'm not too sure about availability on it. So it's going to be really important to me, since I love it so much, to look at comparisons and find out what might come in close to it. So thank you so much for coming along with this. And I hope you're having an awesome uh, 30 inks, 30 days yourself if you're doing it. And if, if you're just following along, bless you. <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.